welcome to a very special episode of Banana News. It's Banana! I'm Mike, and I am so excited for today's episode. Why, you may ask? Well, I'll tell you why. Because today, we're going to watch some of the best clips from the first 19 episodes of Banana News. Now, if you happen to remember the bottom line as you're watching these clips, you can just shout it out. And if you don't recognize the clips, or even if you do, we encourage you to watch all the old episodes of Banana News to see hilarious pranks, to hear cool conversations, and most importantly, to learn truth from God's word. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is take a stroll down memory lane. Let's go! Now we're gonna look at some of the ways that we can bust fear. We can bust fear by prayer, by remembering what God has done, by trusting God, by knowing who God is, more on that one in a minute. By having faith in God's word and more. Check this out. Ah! We can bust fear with prayer. Ah! 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 Ooh. It is indeed impossible to split a body of water in two. Only God has that power. But keep trusting God. Kai! Fear busted. We can bust fear by knowing God's words are true. Gideon, in your own words, give us a play-by-play -play on how it all went down. So, there we were. Ready for action. I took the 300 men and split them up into three parts. Then each soldier, they got a trumpet, they got a clay jar, and a torch. The game plan was for every man to do what I did when I did it. Which means if I blew my trumpet, they were supposed to blow their trumpets and shout, For the Lord and for Gideon! So, we snuck up quietly to the outskirts of the enemy's camp. And then... We, we blew our trumpets and then we smashed our clay jars and we were shouting and screaming and waving our torches. <laughs> and then the Lord, the Lord, he made the Midianite army so confused. They started fighting each other and then they just, they just ran away. <laughs> so, with only 300 Israeli men against the many many, many, many thousands of enemies in those camps, we were victorious, but only because of God's help, because of God's power. <sighs> hey, Christian. Um, Dan the weatherman here, and it's it's kind of cloudy out today. You're pretty, pretty cloudy. And and rain? There's, there's lots of rain outside, and there's so much thunder. Oh, this evening there's definitely a chance of doom. Three, two, one. I am here in the laboratory. I've been working on a few things. <laughs> when I learned that we were going to be learning about God's power, I was super inspired to do something big and exciting. Yeah, over the past few weeks, we have been hearing some true amazing stories of what happens when people put their faith in God. <laughs> things like 
go. Storms becalmed, ja! <lacht> Und Dels Seas the Crossed. Ja. Oh. <lacht> Und then we saw battles that will run. Oh. Perfect. Ja, just enough. Und wie sah Giants, who were defeated? Swishy, swishy, swishy. <laughs> All in God's power. Oh. So, the question you need to ask yourself is this. Hmm. Am I choosing to put my faith in God and his power? Or am I going to allow fear to overtake me? <sighs> See, the thing about fear is this. The more, if you give your fear too much attention, your fear will only get bigger and bigger and bigger in the life. <laughs> Look at that. You don't want your fear to get big like this, right? No. You must say no. No to the fear. Instead, you must pray and trust. That's right. Read your Bibles and memorize your scriptures. When you do that, the power of God will do amazing, stupendous, ausgezeichnet things. Yeah, all because of God's power. Now, we've got one more that we need to do here. But remember, I am in a laboratory. And you are at home. So do not do this at home, kids. Brace yourself. It's going to be big. Whoa! our fears when we put our faith in God's power. <laughs> Fear busted. I love it. Next, Banana News explored what it means to follow Jesus. Jesus loves us and he wants us to choose to follow him. And these clips will remind us what it looks like to follow Jesus. Things like obeying his word and showing grace and love to others and forgiving them and more. And there's also some really messy stuff that you're not gonna wanna miss. Hmm, let me see. Was there anything else? <gasps> Ooh, quite nice. Then we might look around for some shells to decorate it with, or maybe some sticks or something. And then we sit back and admire our beautiful creation. Oh, that's nice. But we know the entire time that all it takes is one wave or pesky sibling with a bucket of water to come and ruin the whole thing. The thing is, we know that what we've built won't last forever because we've built it on a weak Foundation. Oh, 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 what is this? Oh. There was a Jewish man traveling along a road. As he walked, robbers attacked him. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him nearly dead. Sometime after the attack, a priest came by. The priest saw the hurt man, but walked past him. After this, a Levite, who also was supposed to be a worker of God, walked past. He saw the hurt man, but ignored him. Two men that taught others to show God's love didn't stop to show this man God's love themselves. And he was nearly dead, but they still didn't get him any help. But that's not where this parable ends. In this story, another person walked by this hurt Jewish man. And do you know what type of man he was? A Samaritan! Remember, the Jews and the Samaritans were known to hate each other. They were like enemies. 
But what do you think happened in this story? The Samaritan saw the hurt man and stopped to help. He bandaged his injuries and put him on his own donkey and took the man to an inn, which is like a hotel, so that he could rest and heal. The Samaritan even used his own money to make sure he was completely cared for. Wow, Jesus was making a point. The Jews thought priests were the best examples of how to live, but Jesus wanted people to know he cared more about who a person was on the inside than what a person did on the outside. That was awesome! Good. Lighthouses, flashlights, and candles have in common. They're all created to be light to the darkness. They guide us and show us what we can't see when it's dark. Well, did you know that God created all of us to be lights? It's true. What? Um, that's it. I, I don't have any more announcements. I mean, I, mean, I got nothing left that I can say. I mean, oh. Right. Forgot about that part. Jesus said, If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go to search for the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. When he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. Luke 15, four through seven. Whoa. Do you think it's crazy to leave behind all those other sheep to go find the one? Well, the shepherd knew that the other sheep were safe. And even though it might seem crazy, Jesus is making the point that everyone is important and loved by God. See, God wants everyone to have a personal relationship with him. He wants all people to choose to follow Jesus with their entire life. <laughs> Peter was curious to know how many times he should forgive somebody else. Do you remember what the answer was that Jesus gave? Do you? Huh? Huh? Do you? Well, should we forgive somebody just one time when they do us wrong? No, what about seven times like Peter had guessed? Seven pieces of pasta. Nope, not seven times either. The answer Jesus gave may have surprised you. He answered Peter's question in Matthew 18, 22, when he said, no, not seven times, but 70 times seven. Um, I remember that was a pretty big number, so <laughs> let me check my calculator real fast. Yeah, 70 times 7 is 490! Mamma mia, that's a lot of pasta! The owner of the vineyard hired the workers and agreed to pay them a denarius for their work that day. A denarius was payment for a full day's work back then, so they went to work in his vineyard. A few hours later, the vineyard owner went to the marketplace and found some workers not doing anything. He told them to go work in his vineyard and he would pay them what was right, so they went to work. 
The owner went out three more times throughout the day and hired even more workers for his vineyard. Each time he agreed to pay them what was right. When the workday was done, the owner of the vineyard told the person in charge of his workers to pay them for their work, starting with the ones who had been hired last. The workers who had only been in the vineyard for a short time each received a denarius. The workers continued getting paid until eventually the only ones left were the first group hired early in the morning. When they received their denarius, the same amount as every other worker received, they were upset and complained that the workers who had only worked an hour received the same amount as money as those who had worked all day in the heat. The owner of the vineyard politely said, Friend, I haven't been unfair. Didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? Take your money and go. I wanted to pay this last worker the same as you. Am I not allowed to do what I want with my money? Should you be jealous because I am kind to others? <gasps> I guess I was wrong. Hey, can I get some chips with that? I hope you guys are digging these clips as much as I am. Now, we're gonna finish up by remembering who God is. God is the creator, the redeemer, a promise keeper, the Lord of all, among many other things. And there's also gonna be some more super sticky situations. Uh, oh, I need... I don't know what. Whoa! What the world? Ah! That was not so bad. I actually kind of enjoyed it. It was awesome. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Heads so up. Heads up. God is creator. And don't forget, God created you. So the next time you step in front of a mirror, look in it and glorify God and praise him for creating you. Well, the more I look at this creation, it doesn't so much look like a two hump camel. I guess it's time for me to start again. Cool. Because God is three in one. So the next time you hear someone talk about God, or Jesus, or the Holy Spirit, or if you read about it in the Bible, then remember that they are all together the one true God. God is three in one. Now, break these eggs, I must. Whew. Hiya! Hello to all of you. I'm Grandma Skippy. My grandson, Sensei Skippy, is not here. He said something about a rap battle with Toby Mac, whoever that is. Now, God created Adam and Eve, and they were in the garden doing what God designed for them to do. But then, they make bad choice, and they mess up the perfect relationship that they had with God. Tisk, tisk, tisk. And their punishment was to leave the Garden of Eden, to work hard, experience pain, and eventually die. you see. But oh, what a wonderful mess. Oh, what a wonderful mess. Okay, now, let's say that I wanted to put this apple back together again, just as it was before. Could I do that? No, 
I could not do that, not with all of the best super glue in the entire world. I have no power, no ability to put this apple back together the way it was before. I cannot restore it. I cannot redeem it. But God is the redeemer and we are not apples. See, because of our sin, it separated us from God. But he made a way for us to have a relationship with him again. He sent Jesus to pay the price for our sins. And that is how he chose to redeem us. Hiya! 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 So keep trusting that God's plan is perfect and that God is Lord of all. And ask him for the strength and ability to wait for him. Now, it's time. G'day mates, Walkabout Wilson here, and I'm about to take a hike through God's gorgeous creation. Oh, it's gonna be beautiful, and you're gonna wanna join me cause we're gonna find all sorts of things. So come on then, let's go. Whoa! Take a look at that, mates. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's a little rabbit about yay size, and it's the cuddliest little softest ball of fuzz I ever seen in me own life. Shh, shh, shh. The size of those ears, it could hear anything. <gasps> Watch it. Watch. Oh, he's looking at me. He's looking at me with his beady little precious, most cutest little eyes I've ever seen. I love you. Just want to touch it! All of a sudden. Wait, 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 wait! Noah had a huge boat. Okay, don't I get a boat? This? This is the boat I get? Come on, guys. How much? Noah spent hundreds of days on that ark with thousands of animals. I wonder what sorts of things he learned. I'm gonna try to find out for myself. I have learned that not all monkeys like bananas. <coughs> I have learned that hippos are not good tennis players. <coughs> I've learned that elephants can hold a lot of water in their trunks! And then, some time passed. A lot of time. No, 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 I mean, a lot of time. Maybe Abram and Sarai began to wonder if God needed their help or something. I mean, the Bible tells us they did try to take matters into their own hands, and it didn't turn out so well. But even when Abram wasn't being patient, did God break his promises? No way! No, because God is Lord of all and he always keeps his promises. You must give up your own place. Take up your cross daily. You must give up your own place. Take up your cross daily.
hope you guys have enjoyed the first ever Banana News Rewind as much as I have. Now from myself, Banana the Beta Fish, and everybody here at BR Kids, we want you to know that God loves you, we love you, and we'll see you next time.